Good morning. Welcome to morning prayers for Wednesday, excuse me, Friday, April 9th. <clears throat> so let's get ready. Blessed are those who know their need before theirs is the grace of heaven from Matthew 5, 3. Light within all light, soul behind all souls. At the breaking of dawn, at the coming of day, we wait and watch. Your light within the morning light, your soul within the human soul. Your presence beckoning us, beckoning to us from the heart of life. In the dawning of this day, let us know fresh shinings in our soul. In the growing colors of new beginnings all around us, let us know the first lights of our heart. Great star of the morning, inner flame of the universe, let us be a color in this new dawning. Let's be still and aware of the presence of the holy within and all around. And I'm reading um, from day six. These are seven day chapters from Celtic Treasure by John Philip Newell. Um, and it's day six of power and justice. And this reading is paraphrased from Jeremiah 31. For many years, the Hebrew people lived in safety, but the royal family and leaders of the nation again forgot the way of justice. The poor were neglected, innocent blood was shed, and the land became weak. A powerful enemy, the empire of the Babylonians, rose up against Israel. Jerusalem was captured, the king and queen were taken into exile. Generals and warriors, artists and musicians, all were bound and led into captivity. Only the poorest of the poor were left. The temple, the palace, and every great house in the city was burned and its high walls were torn down. And far from home, by the rivers of Babylon, the captives sat down and wept when they remembered Jerusalem. But again, there was a prophet. His name was Jeremiah. He had warned the nation of Israel that it was collapsing, but the leaders were deaf to his words. In exile, he still loved his people and spoke to them words of comfort from God. Keep your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears. You shall come back from the land of your enemy. There is hope for the future. There is promise for your children. I have loved you with an everlasting love and will continue my faithfulness to you. The city shall be rebuilt. Again, you will make music and song. Again, you will plant vineyards and enjoy the fruit. Your life shall become like a watered garden, like a deep spring whose waters never fail. Then shall your young women sing and dance, and young men and old shall be merry. For the one who makes the sun shine by day, and the moon and stars glisten by night, will turn your morning into joy and give you gladness instead of sorrow. From Jeremiah 31. And I'm reading from Psalm 138, a David Psalm. Thank you. Everything in me says thank you. Angels listen as I sing my thanks. I kneel in worship facing your holy temple and say it again. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Most holy is your name. Most holy is your word. 
The moment I called out, you stepped in. You made my life large with strength. When they hear what you have to say, God, all earth's kings will say, thank you. They'll sing of what you've done. How great the glory of God. And here's why. God high above sees far below. No matter the distance, he knows everything about us. When I walk into the thick of trouble, keep me alive in the angry turmoil. With one hand, strike my foes. With your other hand, save me. Finish what you started in me, God. Your life is eternal. Don't quit on me now. Psalm 138. And the poem I selected has a rather lengthy title. Character being different, character being a different thing from beauty, describe the difference. This is by Carl Phillips. And sometimes, yes, I'd beg for it. He'd make me beg, shy moon, why tonight? I heard the geese before I saw them again this morning, this time flying north. Above them, thunderheads like doomed zeppelins, like whales when sounding, though they brought no rain. That's how I used to write, insisting on ordinary things, being somehow more than that, that they had to mean something. The way disruption can punctuate with meaning an established pattern or is when finding out one's silence has been mistaken for arrogance or worse, indifference, when all you meant was to be kind Retreat, not exile. Less the monsters than how we lived beside them. Our lives not leaves, not trash on an updraft, <clears throat> that at random carries them, then refuses them. Can a wind refuse? And yet, shy moon. <clears throat> <clears throat> As if doing what we've always done were enough to be grateful for. As if to keep doing it were itself to be grateful. You just forgot. That's all. It's harder not to forget. How the yard gave way like a ragged imperative to a forest of scrub pines and oak, mostly. How a stand of ferns were almost looked from above excuse me, how a stand of ferns there almost looked from above like a boat of shadows coming at last unmoored in the forest to see that endless seeming that steeped in the night dark. Beg for it. Why shy tonight? The poem was by Carl is by Carl Phillips. He's a professor of English at Washington University in St. Louis. And this is what he writes about the poem. To paraphrase from the poem itself, the fact and or vanishing of monsters, the monsters of memory of our daily lives seems less and less the point compared to how to live with those monsters. The older I get and the more accepting of their insistence on settling in for the long haul. I hope the poem is both an example of that and a meditation on it. Character being a different thing from beauty described the difference by Carl Phillips. So let's reflect on our Meditation, our psalm, and our poem.
for the gift of this new day, for the waking again from the dreams of the night, for our bodies strengthened and our minds renewed. Thanks be to you, O God. You are the stillness of the night. You are the genesis of the morning. You are the moistness of new conception. Let there be peace in the human soul. Let there be wakings to our new consciousness. Let there be tears of love in the life of this world this day and in our own hearts. Let there be fresh tears of love. Let's pray for peace and for the life of the world. May the angels of light glisten for us this day. May the sparks of God's beauty dance in the eyes of those we love. May the universe be on fire with a presence, with presence for us this day. May the new sun's rising grace us with gratitude. Let Earth's greenness shine and its waters breathe with spirit. Let heaven's winds stir the soil of our soul and fresh awakenings rise within us. May the mighty angels of light glisten in all things this day. May they summon us to reverence. May they call us to life. Amen. Good morning. I saw Robin earlier. Good morning, Catherine and Terry and Rick and all those who join later. Um, may you have a blessed Friday. Um, enjoy the sunshine, a lovely weekend, and I'll see you on Monday.